Saddleworth Moor, a vast savannah that stretches as far as the eyes can see, dominated by silence but echoed by an airy breeze, where playful dogs roam and the occasional sheep is seen to graze, where birds elegantly fly in the sky. But this is tragically most known for possibly the most heinous and infamous crimes in British history. This is the home of the Moors murders. Between 1963 and 1965, four innocent children, all at the beginning of their lives, were lured onto these moors. Their kind and caring nature pounced upon and manipulated by pure evil. Once they arrived on this daunting plain, they were savagely killed before being buried and then abandoned. These ruthless murders were carried out by the infamous Myra Hindley and Ian Brady a young couple with a shared and twisted interest in sadism and cruelty. Believing they were destined for a life of killing and getting away with it, only to find out their true destiny lay ahead. Eternal incarceration. These acts of evil left behind five devastated families who have spent their whole lives searching for answers. How and why? One of the victims was 12-year-old John Kilbride, abducted from Ashton Market in 1963 and found in a shallow grave in 1965. But who was the boy in the picture before his life was so brutally stolen? What were those two years like while he was missing? John's brother Terry and Anne, who speaks on the behalf of her late husband, Danny Kilbride, will now tell their story, how it's affected their lives and share with us some exclusive information never before heard. Oldest. Yeah, yeah. Was he the leader at all? If there were ever any trouble, John would be the leader then. Okay. Apart from that, he more or less did his own thing with lads at his own age. What hobbies and interests did John have as a kid? He liked drawing. He liked his football. Typical yeah. lad likes his football. Oh, yeah. We were just into everything, like... Logging for the bonfire and stuff like that all together when we were very <laughs> little, you know, trying to carry a full tree with a coffee instead of chopping it up before we moved it. You You're know? carrying a full tree back? Trying to do, yeah. <laughs> About 500 kids off street. <laughs> you don't it, see that sort of all, stuff these days, do you? Stuff like that. Oh, Everyone's you know, got their heads in, it, iPads and whatnot. These giving days. me a doggy back up to bed and stuff like that, you know, I can remember. And, what were John's best qualities? And if you could have one of them, which one would you have? John, as a person. I like that answer. He was comical, funny, always whistling. What was he whistling? Zed Girls. Always whistling that. Obviously. Yeah, you always knew when they were coming home, <laughs> but we never heard it that night, did we? Was he happy at home? Oh, and yeah. did he have a, did he have a good relationship with his parents and with his brothers and sisters, with yourselves? Yes and no. It was a very happy home when my dad hadn't been out on piss. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, not been out boozing. I can relate to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cut that out. I think a lot. I think a lot of families then can relate to that. Did you look up to John when you was a kid? I think we all did. All the all the siblings. Yeah, I think we all did. I think a lot of the lads did. You know, on the street and that because he was a he, like I say, he were a Roman. He got stuck in and mugged in with everything like everybody else did. Yeah. You know, going newting for news and that with big <laughs> baskets, throwing it in the pond and bringing it back and playing with news on having races with them, you know, and stuff <laughs> like that. What's your favourite memory together, Terry? I think my favourite memory with John was the last time I saw him when I was going out the, the door on the Saturday morning when we were going to play football. John were getting 
they were open, helping me mum when you are having his breakfast and that. And you was like, see you later. And off I went. You yeah. Know. That's my last memory of John. But one of my favourite ones. So it's a good memory. It's a good bad good one. memory. memory. <laughs> <laughs> How long had John been working at Ashton Market? He'd been doing it for a short while. Well, I won't say a long, long while. From from when he turned twelve, I'd say. So yeah. quite quite recent to yeah. when yeah. he yeah. disappeared from down there. and getting the odd job on there and just to earn a couple of bob, you know, and then bring it home, give some, give it to my mum, and then she'd give him half back. I was going to say, what what did he do with his pay? And yeah, he gave so he half to yeah. Sheila? Yep. And he'd get half through south. And he'd get half back. And that was a norm. What I'm going to talk about on the next next part is John actually going missing and how it affected yourself and the rest of the family in in that period of time, which was, is that my right to think it was two years? Yeah, it was two years. Which was like a lifetime. Did your mum know he was at work that day? She'd, she'd suspect it. With him not coming home from being at the picture rooms. He was at the cinema. Yeah. And then he did he go to the and Ashton then, market that, afterwards? That's right, yeah. To innocently go and help move some help with some Just boxes? To, and, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's how he, he got picked up, you know. Can you help with these boxes, you know? In that two years, I mean, there was a lot. I mean, my mum with dad and dad, my mum especially with travelling all over the place, you know, getting trains, going buses and different towns and that, searching, you know. I bet there was no nowhere she didn't search, was there? She was everywhere. You know, sometimes we went with her and other times, you know, she'd be out on her own. And it was just the house looking for a word went dead yeah because it was a happy house it was always singing in the house I mean, when my mum were baking or raining or washing or whatever she was doing she'd be singing and it just went completely must have been so hard did you ever fear that you you or your brothers or sister could be adopted oh, yeah. as well oh yeah well you do i mean Pa- pa- paranoia sets in, in doesn't in it? In the the education weren't brilliant. Yeah. All we, all we wanted to do was play out, go and play football, go and do this, go and do the other. Yeah. But we couldn't go past that tree and we couldn't go past that lamppost. Is it true that Brady would sit outside your house whilst John was missing on his motorbike? Yes. Watching you come and go? Yes. Getting some sort of sick kick out of it. Yes, but obviously you didn't, didn't know. No, it was just a man on a motorbike. Exactly. Exactly. That's a, that's a new level of twisted. Isn't it? Well, it's twisted, completely oh. twisted, aren't they? Both of them twisted. I think. To be honest, I think she was busting in without her to exactly. entice. If she in. didn't lure the pe- the kids in. Yeah. Because they still Bra- been here, though. Brady couldn't have got them into his car, could he? No. Because he was a, a bad man. What a what a twenty twenty odd year old blonde woman, probably putting on the sweet voice yes. and the charm. Yeah. Come with me. I'll leave, move this box. Can yeah. you help me find a glove? Yeah. Well, so well, it was in them days. You were that naive. Yeah. Did you'd have done it? You know, you're that naive. You'd have done it. How were Christmases while John was missing? Well, did, did they did they even did they happen? Did your mum have to My mum still bought birthday presents and Christmas presents? Can you tell us about what Sheila would do at dinner time? Because I've 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 heard and I've read that she would still put a placemat out and a chair out. Yeah. But was this was this for two for every day for, for the two years? Two years the chair went out. Not every day, on a on a Sunday meal. Yeah, the big the big day. The big day where we all sat around for like a Sunday roast or whatever in their days, you know, that made do. Yeah. And the chair was uh waiting for him to walk back in through the door. Yeah. Hoping, hoping praying, hoping. all of you. 
all open. So it makes you think, going back to the parent, the parent view, I think now growing up, they must have been thinking, he's never coming back. Would they ever sort of air that or no? Would, would they keep that to themselves? Oh, to... Never ever air it at all, my mum. All my dad, my dad were very quiet all through the years, you know, about it. He, 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 he kept an hell of a lot in. Yeah. My dad, he let it out fighting in the boozers and stuff like that. That's, That's when his anger would then That's come where, out. Yeah. Do you think that they were protecting the other, you and your siblings by, by keeping that in? Yeah. yeah. Well, they've always protected us. Yeah. All the lives they protected us. More so my mother. Did your parents become extra vigilant? Well, yeah. They could, I mean, we couldn't work with the garden for I don't know how long. And I bet she was always watching, wasn't she? Yeah. Even though you were oh, yeah. just on the front. Yeah, well, it wouldn't only be my mum. I think you'd have a million eyes out on yeah. you. Did you know it's the streets quieter? Uh, the streets went very, very quiet to what they used to be. Did you and your brothers and sisters have much time off school in the time that he was missing? <sighs> not really. No? Not really, no. It was... My mum was a stickler. For us going to school. Did John always come straight home from work when he finished? Yeah. So did the alarm bell go off? Always came home. The alarm bell went off around about half past six. What led to John being discovered? Edward Evans. Edward Evans. I've always said, I know it's not a nice thing to say, but thank God for Edward Evans. If he had not picked Edward Evans up, at the railway station like he did. None of us would have ever known. Edward Evans was the Moors murder's fifth and final victim, and he too was intended to be buried on Saddleworth Moor. But thanks to the bravery of Dave Smith, this never happened, thus starting the beginning of the end of Brady and Hindley. Could still be a mystery to this day, couldn't it? Yeah, well, it would be. I mean, even then, after what he did to Edward, if it hadn't been for David Smith being there, Mm. None of all this had come out. Now, did you ever suspect Dave Smith was part of, of the... We always did. We always suspected that he was part of it, but as we grew up older, I think we realised, you know, he saw something there that absolutely scared him to death. All of a sudden, the screaming, this swearing, this banging around. I go running into the living room and Brady's got this lad whacking him and whacking him and hitting him and hitting him with an axe. It's very violent. Very, very violent. Now I'm scared. I ring 999, pick me up. I'm glad they didn't hang them. If they'd have hung them, they'd have taken everything to the grave with them. There'd have been no finding of Pauline Reed. They'd have said nothing. He said nothing for 20 odd years. Whereabouts on, on the moors was um, John found? And how was he identified? A shoe. A shoe? A shoe, a winkle pick of shoe. With an hole in it, with a piece of cardboard inside. Was the cardboard there to make him a... Was that just to strength, stop, strength to and try and stop it leaking? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know where the shoe is now? Well, it'll be at archive now. I mean, the night they brought it home, we we got to kicked upstairs, all of us. Well, we thought that we, we thought we were upstairs. We were sort of halfway on the stairs, you know. Listening. Apart from Danny, you know, with him being the oldest lad then. Yeah. When John had gone missing, like, you know, and they found the shoe and my dad said he could stay in, in the room. You know, well, we identified the shoe and everything. And I bet he insisted. He insisted he did on insist. that. Insist. Danny did insist, yeah. He did insist. What was the emotion when you realised it was John's shoe? Was, was there any relief there at all? It, it's hard. 
It was hard. I mean, I were only a kid, so I'm thinking, is he renting? Yeah. You know what I mean? My mum only told me and Pat, well, Danny had told us first, you know yeah. what I mean? But my mum only told me and Pat, you didn't tell the girls until a few weeks after. Do you remember how your parents instantly reacted? Oh, I think, I remember my dad screaming. Oh, did he? Yeah. My dad screaming. Not my mum. Not my mum. I think it was that much of a shock or she knew it was coming. You know what I mean? Almost like she was preparing for this moment, but your dad was still clinging yeah. on. Yeah, well, some hope. It was a scream of my dad. Is it, is it a scream you've never heard before of him? Well, that weren't my dad, like I say, he was an old man. He was, yeah. You know, he wants to even scream if we were getting his head kicked in. Is there any police or inspectors who you feel went above and beyond and you'd like to mention? Give him a bit of a shout out. Back to Mowser. Ian Farley. But Mowser went, Inspector Mowser went above and beyond. He did go above and beyond, he did. You got a lot of respect for him. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. Plenty of respect for him. After John was discovered to have been murdered by Brady and Hindley, did your mum and dad drift or did they get stronger? They drifted. That's so sad. They drifted apart. Did you become closer with your parents afterwards, yourself personally? Did the relationship change at all? Did the dynamic change? Did it get better? My mum went into it. She she went into herself, my mother, and she stayed like that until, I'd say, into her 60s. Oh, she Before seemed like she a really sweet lady. To speak a bit, you know, about different things. and But she was a very, very, very sweet lady, my mother. No matter who you speak to, we'll say that. Now, speaking of Brady and Hindley, did you want them to face the death penalty? Or are you glad that they went to prison? At the time. At yeah, the time. Because it had not long been abolished. I believe it was six months before yeah, yeah, they were well, on trial, the death penalty was abolished. Yeah, it weren't long. In sort of a way, is it is it kind of a good thing that they missed the death penalty because we wouldn't have we Pauline wouldn't Reed? Have, we wouldn't have found Pauline. Does it help knowing that John wasn't the only victim of these crimes and that four of her families had the similar grief? No, that do not help at all. I mean, that, that hurts that because of what we went through, all of us, all of us alive and still going through it. Yeah. Even now, they've all gone through that. Yeah, that's it. That's... All the families have gone through it. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting answer, that. It's... You'd rather it be it's four other families having the same pain it's as, for the as five, yourself. There's five victims. Yeah. And five victims, <coughs> five victims, <coughs> families five grieving. Five victims, families so. grieving, all the same, all at the same period of time and everything. We're still all grieving. I, I feel really sorry for Alan, you know, his family. Like Keith's brother, Alan. Yeah, Bennett. because he can't have closure. Would finding Keith bring you closure? I think it would bring, bring the, close the book. Yeah. It would close the book. It would never, ever stop because there could be another book. Did you, and do you, find any comfort in talking to um, the other family members at all? Yeah, well, like Winnie, I've spoke with Winnie a lot. I've spoke to Terry. No, who's te wait, Terry? Is that Terry West? Is that the brother Terry. of Leslie Ann? Yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a very, very nice man, Terry. Very camera shy and press shy. He has been all his life, you know. I've read his book. Yeah. Well, that, that, it, even that, I had to be outside of him while he started that. Well, he thanks you at the start. Straight, it says, as you know, right at the beginning, thank you to my friend Terry Kilbride, who has 
stood by me for the past fifty years. So it shows how close yeah. you two you two have been. We got we got really close me and Terry. Would you like to see him again? Oh I would, yeah. I would like to see him, Terry. So we're joined by Anne Colbride, who is the wife of the late Danny Colbride. And we've we believe that Danny's done a lot of work um for for keeping petitioning to keep Brady and Hindley inside, um, working tirelessly hard for the other families. So what can you tell us about Danny and the work that he's done and and what he's done for the other families over the years? Well, Danny all our married life worked endlessly and tirelessly to keep Hindley and Brady where they were in prison. He did documentaries, morning shows, uh, Stories in the life. papers, everything, night shows. He just campaigned on everything he possibly could. He had records yeah, band. For Winfrey. Yeah. He the did. records band. Are you referring to the like the Smiths? Yeah. Which that's so for little children. So for little called. children, it was called. He that's went it, to every shop, every store, yeah, everywhere, every and got store, a band. Everywhere. That's a disgusting thing to yeah. to bring out. Yeah. And he said that if they were singing making songs of children that were suffering, there should be something come off it. And they handed Danny a cheque and we handed it to the NSPCC. Oh really? For children, yeah. yeah. I still got the thing at home, the receipt, yeah. That's, so the money that the Smiths made from that song, a certain... He paid a donation, yeah. To the NSPCC? Yeah. Danny more or less made him do it. He may, did make him do it. Yeah, he did, He ought yeah. to do it. Or else well, he had to it. do it. He was shamed into doing it. Did he, so yeah. did he have conversation? well, did he have certain oh, yeah. words with um, Morrissey? Yeah. He, personal, he, personal, yeah. personally he wrote with him. to Danny, yeah. 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 Morrissey, Morrissey wrote to Danny? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. they were scared of it going out publicly, you see, to everywhere and getting banned completely. And then all the all the proceeds of it that have probably gone to a charity. What Danny said. What Danny said. So the only reason that that particular song be, was released is because there was a uh, you received. It was a, no, a donation. No, no, Luke. Not because they received the donation. The the donation wasn't even there. The donation it wasn't was made. Thought of. That was then. What said we'll make a donation to you, because even Danny though had they it banned. Took, even though they took it off the shelf. Oh yeah. right, so Danny had it banned. Yes. Yeah. Right, right. That's he had it banned, and they give him a donation up to save face. I right. suppose. Wow. Yeah. Otherwise, he could have gone public and say, "Will that?" And boom. He did everything. All, all our married life and all the time my children were growing up. Look at all them t-shirts and stuff on in America what yeah. they brought out with yeah. William Brady's face on and all that. He yeah. sopped it all, you know. Wow. So oh, did, yeah. was it, did it become a bit of a, a bit of a life mission of his? It so was. it did, it was. It was, that yeah. was his life. It was his yeah. life. Yeah. From being a young lad it was his yeah. life. His life. I mean, him and Donny, they had the same bedroom, you know, so they had the click at night, what the things they spoke, yeah. spoke about and everything, you know. And I think because Danny did it all that, that many times and he kept it going, that everywhere we went, people spoke about it. Yeah. It didn't only become a thing in our home, it was spoken of outside, yeah. in shops, in workplaces, everywhere. Everywhere, even it all. like I mean, I got locked up and not for fighting yeah. me, didn't I? Yeah, over even going down the street, there were photographers, you oh. know, if they were filming or anything, oh. yeah. Yeah. over yeah. here in the bad side of what people thought, yeah, about Inley and Brady saying now they should be let free and stuff like that, yeah, things I was overhearing, but I was a knothead then, yeah, and Danny slowly brought me down. You so see, everybody's entitled to their own so opinion. Danny helped, Danny's helped you? He helped me, I helped, yeah. Yeah. I think um, Danny was really the main one, the main the oh, spokesman that, that kept her where she was. Oh, not, not, families, not so much Brady, her. Because she, was, she was trying to get paroled, wasn't right, she? That's right, yeah. yeah. And you to 
his hard work. Can you tell us yeah. about um, Shiva Weston and maybe on to him for a noble year to go missing? Can you tell us about him petitioning out in the rain? We all, yeah, we all. Oh, do. He's, he's stood in all kinds of weather. He's getting signatures. Getting all these signatures, signatures yeah. We went and to the got, got Oh, there were thousands from all over every country. There was coming through the letterbox like big stacks of We've even from factories, America, shops. Australia, oh, yeah. everywhere, yeah. all over the world. Yeah. Everywhere, yeah. Yeah. Everybody joined in his campaign. Yeah. yeah. Wow. To keep when they, they said when they, they wanted two hundred thousand, didn't they? How many? Well, top that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. it was unbelievable. Yeah. Honestly, the loft was full, wasn't it? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So she might have got, there's a chance she might have got parole if it wasn't for Danny's hard work. She hated Danny as much as he hated yeah. her. She had that hate for Danny. That's why she had Danny arrested. She won't let him go. She had Danny arrested? She, yes, she had won't Danny let him arrested go. from my address, well our address, yeah. Yeah, they won't let nobody in at the police station, only Danny, all the press was outside. That's right, only Danny, they won't let me yeah. down, they won't let you in, would they? No. You know, but and was, in the end, there were that many people there. Uh, yeah. They, they come to took him. They it wanted were printed to, all over yeah. the papers. He could serve up for ten years. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's almost like they they've got they've got more rights. Exactly. Well, obviously, she thought she had rights, didn't she, to have him arrested? Yeah. What person who's done that, taking children's lives, from her, and where she is in the cell, issues somebody from Scotland Yard to arrest? The brother. It's some it's some front that isn't it? More from <laughs> more, more than front, front Brighton isn't it? Pier, isn't it? That proves what kind of a person this, she was. Exactly. This is it? what they like. Exactly. This There's your answer like. to what she was. Yeah, it says it all really. There. Of course it does. And was he doing lots of um, lots of work for the other families as well as just? Oh, well, everything he did. Yeah, he included them. Yeah. Well, so everything, everything he did was for everybody. For everybody. Not yeah. just for the Kilbrides. It was for. Yeah, what, 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 we've all, what we've always done has been for everyone. Yeah. That's not really nice only, Not only the victims of the war murder, <laughs> but for everyone. He had a say in and uh, a hand in future safeguarding of, of children. Yes, he did, yeah. Didn't he? yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely. So he's left a bit of a legacy. He left a big legacy. Yeah. What did you both do when Hindley died? Did you did you celebrate? Did you party? Did you we pop out? Up? Did you pop open the fizz? We'd gone out that night and we were doing a charity do and that was the night she died. That was right. And we was raising money in our local pub and we was carrying on raising this money and all of a sudden when we we'd gone in there country. and he came with us this bulk yeah. and this big cheer went up and it turned around that it was, we're a, for the it red was a celebration because she'd gone. Yeah. Um, hallelujah. Yeah. And um, rest in hell, there Myra. In, yeah. there, there was a reporter in there, weren't they? It, it was him that was in our house. Yeah. Wasn't it? And they tried asking Danny a question, and he said, "If you write a check out now for X amount, yeah. you go and put it in that bucket there, to yeah. the red nose there. I'll speak to you." Yeah. And they did, didn't they? Yeah. That's what they were like, though. Everything went either to it. Children's Ward, or the Prem Ward, or the Burn Unit, or everything. Everything, everything went back into charitable donations. He took nothing. Sorry, has the pain eased over the years at all? No. No? No. You got the same pain for when you was a the, the boy? I think the fighting all the years, like we have, for one thing and another, has made you, you can't get that pain eased. Do you think it's had an effect on your health? Well, Because it's probably like, weakened like your immune system and you, all that grief yeah, and all that fighting and all that well, strength. Not well at all. I mean, Danny weren't well when he died. Our pap's not well, I'm not well. Our Marie's not well. It's all coincidence, is it? And my mum weren't well all them years, you know. How often do you go down to visit John's grave? Regular. Well, they're in the same grave, you see, John, my dad, my mum and our Chris. Well, we're going to go and lay some flowers up there for you. Yeah. Put some nice flowers down. A little, little, little sign of respect. That's kind of you, though. That's no problem at all. 
Is there any false narratives about the Moors murders, about the, the case? There's been a lot what's been written that the public... They, you see, the public will take anything in what's in the paper or being said on TV or anything, you know. There's an hell of a lot that i watched and I think what a load of bullshit. Right. Do you, you know what I mean? Yeah. I bet that pisses you off, doesn't it? Yeah. There's one drama, it was Seen a Weevil, The Moors Murders. Now, does that does that depict the events accurately? Yes. It does? Yeah. Bang on. Now, bang on. You... Even up to where uh, my dad got arrested and everything, it is absolutely bang on. Inspector Mounsey, how he was in it, is exactly how he was, I remember. So if people were to watch that particular drama, they'd get quite a good understanding oh, of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did, they have, did you I have mean, to okay it? All the people than me at the time, watching that, would have thought, That's, that is absolutely, exactly the Kilbride family. And yeah. The, 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 yeah, exactly. Did all of the families have to okay that to be aired? Yeah, we went and watched that. Now, was you there for the um, Brady hearing for him wanting to be released back into prison? You know the hearing that he had to be... Yeah, yeah. Was you there? Yes, we were there for the video link. What was his demeanour like? Oh, my exact words when he came out was... The way he was groomed and everything, with his silver hair all slip back, belt cream back, and not like my dad's used to be, you know. And the first word out of my mouth was, you know, if my mother and father had been looked after like he'd been looked after all these years, he'd still be alive now. That's a good point. That's a good point. He's probably had better health care than exactly. anybody else. Than any of us. Disgusting. Isn't it? He's on private healthcare, not NHS healthcare, he's on proper private healthcare. Well that brings me on. I mean, it's like the book he's wrote, where's all that money gone, what, what, what that earned, you know? The book, the uh, Brady's book? Yeah, the uh, Gates of Genius. Yeah, so yeah, where... Where, where does the he, money go off that? He shouldn't be getting a morsel of a penny. So what you do where wonder where... Gone? Mm. Has he any relations anywhere? Dodgy that, innit? It is dodgy. Ian Brady would often send letters to his victims' families. Looking through these letters, really hard to make out what he's even talking about. It's a load of gibberish. But what I can make out is it's not a letter to try and help the families. There's no offer of an apology. Not that that would help. There's no trying to help, trying to find missing bodies that remain to this day. It's all I, 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 me, 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 passive aggressive, moaning about his conditions in Ashworth High Security Hospital. It's all very, very narcissistic. What a very sick and disgusting man he was. Myra Hindley and Ian Brady, should they have no rights? No, they shouldn't have any rights. Anyone look that commits a crime, a rape or a murder, whether it's a child or an adult or anything, and they go to prison for it, he should stay there for the rest of their lives, no rights at all, yeah. and be buried within the prison walls. What's brought you joy in life? Children. Yeah. Yeah, how what, many what's your children? Name? How many have you got? I've got seven children. And, and you're from a family of seven yourself? Yeah. And I've got five grown children. That's nice. Do you think there's any more victims on the Moors? I do. It's very hard to say, but there was a lot of children missing at the time. So Which could all be... Take it on your own head and what you think now. Because you should know my opinion. Well, yeah, I, I, I think there's more, personally. When did Brady die? And can I ask you... Is it true that it was on John's birthday? He had a 15th of May. John's birthday. And my daughter Wendy's birthday. And your daughter's birthday as well? Yes. What do you think on what do you think about that? 
Do you think that he held well, on for that? I knew he was dying the day before I got the message that he wasn't worth 24 hours. Well, like it weren't 24 hours, I think it was 12 hours. What was that? And he kept hanging on and hanging on, and I was waiting for the phone call, waiting for the phone call, and it didn't come until the next morning, where we went into the 15th of May. I don't drink, but I'll have a pint. I will have a pint. Oh, he's gone. I mean, look at him there. Look, look at him.